Why is Naz not dead yet? Welcome back to the Raid Room. For those that aren't aware, Raid Room is when with no cuts, no extra edits, it's just you, me, chewing the fat, no B-roll, we just take a subject and we pull it apart at the seams. And today is a real close one to my heart. So much so that I would normally do these mostly off the cuff, but I do have some notes off screen because there is just so much to discuss. And ultimately, today's subject is, why is Naz not dead? There's gonna be some of you out there going, what a weird video, Naz isn't dead yet. Trust me, join me back in the lore. As much as 10 years ago, when I was really starting to take it seriously when it comes to discussing just NAS, because I realized in the market, no one was talking about this subject in a chewable, friendly way. Many, many people, friends, professional colleagues and more, were saying, why bother? NAS isn't gonna you know, exist in the future. It's gonna go cloud, it's gonna completely take over. NAS, no one's gonna bother, it's not worth it. The power consumption, the pricing, the hassle, no one's gonna want a NAS. Now fast forward 10 years, not only has the subject continued, it's continued to flourish quite significantly. Indeed, so much so that in the last 12 to 18 months, I have never seen so many brands engage and roll out their own network attached solution. Now I'm not naive, cloud is still the Big one, it is everywhere, you can't move away from it. And realistically, most businesses have to integrate some small or greater degree of cloud service into their environment. However, the majority of them are also recommending bare metal in some shape or form. Now, a lot of this is to do with them ultimately saying now they want to locally cash with it. And NAS brands have done the same thing, by the way, working in both directions. And alongside that, you've seen Hyperscale also start talking about how you need to integrate with these large uh, SAAS software as a service and PAAS platform as a service providers alongside a bare metal large scale raw storage area. But with all of that going on, I think a lot of us can also agree that our reliance on cloud services isn't flawless. Notwithstanding, uh, at least at the time of recording now, uh, in the middle of October, or se second half at the very least, we saw that massive AWS fail that saw an enormous number of our daily services suddenly become unavailable. Google has several times dropped the ball in terms of accessing their products and services remotely when users who base their businesses around cloud have found periodically that suddenly they can't access their data. And no amount of small, incremental, and tiny fractions of their cache data has done the job. And so, so I'm not gonna suggest this is a constant issue, but when it comes to businesses that need access to that data, not just for email services, but client, customer, and reference data, that the requirement for a bare metal solution on site really has become unavoidably, you know, there. They can't get rid of that need because it only has to go wrong once to lose enough money where they could have just bought the bloody hardware. That's one of the reasons that NAS hasn't gone anywhere, but that really just does affect the large scale business. Arguably, the real reason that NAS, as I refer to in network attached storage and private server ownership, hasn't gone anywhere and is any, uh, if anything flourished, it's because cloud has become so absorbently expensive. Now, I'm not going to put on my tin hat and tell you that uh, cloud services are a racket. I don't think they are. They're being run like a racket though. What do I mean by that? Well, do you remember that thing, the pandemic? A few years ago, it was quite big. It was pretty cool to stay at home and work from home, shockingly. Um, well, when, when everyone was working from home during that time, they needed a lot of remote access services and they also had to access the cloud car a lot. And all of the cloud service providers and cloud service adjacent providers, your Zooms, um, your virtual machine, etc., did a really, really great, <laughs> they did gangbusters in terms of revenue during that period and got a lot of customers, but moreover, a lot of data was living on their services. A cluttered, unsorted, annoying to sort through data. So a few years ago, it became, uh, it was a surprise to everyone, but those that follow NAS and Cloud, that they massively scaled up the pricing. Now, a lot of this, they said, was to do with increased resource utilization on the server side. They also said it was to do with adding extra services, AI supported services, and the running cost that went alongside that, and ultimately, just rising electricity costs. Now, I'm not suggesting electricity is not going up in price. It bloody well has. Um, for a multitude of reasons, socio-political, economic, and climate-based. But the amount that cloud services were charging more for was not scaled against the utility. So a lot of the cloud providers ramped up their pricing. 
they ramped up the pricing by included lots of extra services, some of which were already there. They just changed the profile and number of users in the utility. And in some cases, they just added services that nobody wanted. And the result was that some users at that point, 2022, 2023, were looking at cloud providers going, oh, I'm not sure about this. But the real kicker was when people started trying to migrate their data away and shared stories on, thing, uh, stories on things like data egress, which is how much cloud service providers charge you to remove large amounts of data in a short period of time. And secondly, the idea that when they started migrating their data away, things such as metadata stripping had taken place. Um, the idea that some of the data they were pulling away from cloud services was incomplete and ultimately that they had been paying bloated prices for bloated storage services that they didn't need. Now, the real nail in the coffin for all of this came down to when we started seeing NAS devices and private server devices becoming increasingly more affordable, the tipping point, as it were, where it got down to, you could have a cloud service, and then after five years, after paying a subscription service from something as little as 100 gig, all the way up to 5, 10, 20 terabytes, and then after a few years, find out that you would have to move that data off anyway. Cloud service providers made it of, you know, obtrusive and difficult as all hell to pull your data out of those ecosystems, and you would still need to buy hardware to put the data on. So the longer they left it, the more money they were effectively losing out on to purchase a local storage appliance. And that really was the big tipping point for a lot of users. Now, alongside that, we've also got to talk about the subject of speed. The amount of data we use, the, size, the average size of data. Hell, pull out your more recent smartphone, take a photo, and have a look at the size of the file you just created. Now, when it comes to storing that data on the cloud, you don't have the time to sort through the data on the cloud. You don't have the facility and the edifice to quickly go through those files. So for example, relying on a cloud service to go through files and delete old files doesn't feel smooth, doesn't feel intuitive, doesn't feel easy or efficient. And that's by design, remember that. But it meant that when you wanted to access your data, the speed of cloud services started to be discussed quite significantly because up to that point, and by that point, I do mean 2022, 2023, when you wanted to access data on the cloud, the speeds were middling, but then internet speeds domestically, I'm not gonna say they were bad, but they were kind of at parity with the way and the speed you were accessing data from the cloud service. Now, fast forward to now, we are seeing gigabit internet connections a great deal more affordable. We're seeing a lot more of them out there. Ultimately, that was the point at which I think a lot of users started saying that NAS would die because we had internet speeds that were surpassing gigabit internet, uh, gigabit network speeds in our home and business environments because we could get an internet connection that theoretically could give us 100 megabytes per second and therefore it was at parity with our network. The problem was cloud service providers rarely, rarely, rarely give you that speed. You can have um, 100 uh, megabytes per second or a gigabit upload speed and um, if you're really lucky, a download speed of that number, which would be insane. But if you try to connect to your cloud service provider, you never got those speeds because they are already still leveraging out their own upload download at the data center level, depending on the data center you were accessing. Consequently, the big promise that internet speeds would therefore make cloud service provider completely overshadow local network attached storage ownership ended up becoming a myth because having the tunnel toward the internet wasn't enough for the cloud service provider to fully saturate those connections because they have finite ISP connected service uh, performance numbers as well. Add to that that the, the domestic NAS system for as little as $100 in some cases, but realistically two to 300, now arrive with 2.5 gigabit network performance numbers. And you can upgrade systems conveniently for as little as $30 to five gigabit easily. Ultimately, the scale up on local technology has been astronomically fast. 
but the pricing has come down. We see systems now like these that rock out with 2.5 gig, 5 gig network connection support of M.2 NVMEs, giving thousands of megabytes per second, and indeed hard drives now hitting 30 terabytes. This hard drive here retails for about six to 700 nicker, and it's 30 terabytes. Do have a look online and see how much 30 terabytes of cloud would cost you per year. Now, yes, this needs an edifice, it needs a case, it needs another drive for redundancy, perhaps it needs a backup. But that is just a small case example of how the hardware in the world of NAS has become more affordable, larger and faster, whereas cloud has become stagnated, slow, bloated and too expensive. And that brings us for many businesses, one of the main barriers that has made them move off the cloud and onto local storage, security. Security comes in several different forms. Unfortunately, cloud service providers have really been getting sticky fingered about your data. Number one, we've already touched it, the ability to pull data out has become increasingly difficult. It really, really troubles them to pull data out of the cloud en masse, easily, conveniently, and efficiently. But the second problem is what is your data doing? Because so many users online have gone through the TNC, gone through the connected TNC of other services and found fair usage with uh, cloud uploaded data to be used in AI models. Now that from a confidentiality stake is insane. The very idea that my data could be used to benefit a business's AI model and then find out I'm paying for the privilege, it's one thing for many of us to point at services from, say, China and question the security of that, and I'm not suggesting there isn't merit. What I'm saying is, more often than not, we downplay the security implications of our data going up to cloud services being used in AI model training there. And again, that's not universal to any one state, any one country, it is a universal. Check your TNC. But this leads to a combination of the two problems I just mentioned, birthing the third, true deletion or secure erase. And many businesses have migrated over to NAS and if anything have kept the business of larger scale rack mount and industrial grade NAS solutions at the high capacity petabyte level going because when data is uploaded to the cloud, it's one thing to have access to it, but it's another one to know 100% that when you delete, that it is gone and there's just no guarantees. And there's multiple instances of true deletion not happening regardless of assurances of the fact. When you upload all of your data, your literal hundreds terabytes of data to a large scale PAAS platform uh, service, knowing that data is deleted for some businesses is genuinely life and death because their confidentiality agreements, uh, um, legality, and then maybe then being litigated all to buggery, it's really important to know that data is deleted. And I think all of these factors that I've discussed is why NAS is still here. The cost, the efficiency, the performance and accessibility and the security stability, just the works, it's all here in NAS still. And cloud service providers, as much as they try to provide all of these things, as much as they try to offer and assure users, they never truly can. And I'm again, I am not, not, not suggesting that there isn't a place for cloud. I think there is a place for cloud. I think there is in your 321 or your whatever your backup strategy is, there is utility for everything from USB DAS to NAS to large scale cloud. But it's not about cloud or NAS, it's about both of them and they have to coexist as bare metal and remote access because there are of course things that cloud provide that NAS can't in terms of um, ease of access in some cases. But this is mainly why NAS ain't going nowhere guys because realistically as long as data keeps getting bigger, demands get getting, keep getting higher and the cloud service providers keep ramping up the price portfolio, these are just going to exist. They're going to keep going and that's why if you are a cloud user and you're considering buying a NAS, you should have already bought, got one. If you think there is a potential chance that you need one, you should have already got one, so get one now. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for joining me in this big old ranty raid room, and I'll see you next time.